please be seated. I am very happy to be with you this morning for a couple of reasons. One is it's morning prayer. And I'm happy to have it back. It's been a while. Uh, and that part of that is that our faith, kind of faithful remnant choir, those that have been able to pull themselves back together after all that work of Easter, we have our choir back, which, uh, which in morning prayer, uh, they get to sing some extra pieces. And that psalm this morning that they sang was delightful. And I'm so happy they're here and they were able to share that piece with us. The title of my message this morning, my sermon this morning, is Discovering Opportunities. Drawn from the verse from the Gospel of Luke, Oh, how foolish you are and slow to heart to believe. One of the challenges of human nature is that we are so quick to be disappointed when things don't work out as we want. People struggle to see events from different perspectives. They struggle to see new opportunities growing out of disappointments. Why are we so quickly disappointed? Perhaps it's because we like predictability. If we do X, then we will get Y. Or because we invest ourselves into one plan and want it to work out. Or maybe we judge things as disappointments because we are, are emotionally invested in a particular outcome. In the year 2000, I was sitting in those pews over there. Well, okay, by then I was probably back up there when the altar was farther toward the wall there. And uh, I was an acolyte, uh, one of the oldest acolytes in the church, I think in history, it seemed. <laughs> but I didn't mind, I was, because I was called to the priesthood. More than that, I was called to school ministry. I wanted to be a high school chaplain more than anything. When I was in seminary, I struggled, uh, uh, struggled a bit, because my classmates, they all wanted to be rectors, and I didn't. But I got past that. Then the diocese said I had to work at a church for a couple years. I couldn't see why, but I did it for five years. After that, I was ready to be a chaplain. My alma mater hired me to, to come back and work with them. Even better, my daughter was going into her senior year at the school. When I arrived, I arrived with high expectations. Almost immediately, however, it couldn't have gone worse. No matter what I did, it became clearer and clearer that we weren't a good match. I was disappointed. I had expected my ministry to last for the rest of my career. It didn't. After a five-year struggle, I moved on. Maybe you have had a similar disappointment in your life. A marriage didn't last. Child rearing was harder than you could have imagined. A job didn't work out. Life can be full of disappointments. But disappointments don't have to ruin our lives. We can view disappointments differently. In fact, we can discover opportunities in them. Opportunities greater than we could imagine. The road to Emmaus story tells us how. It's still the day of the res resurrection. Two followers of Jesus were walking the six or seven miles to the village called Emmaus. Only one of them in the account in Luke is named, that being Cleopas. Some scholars think the unnamed disciple was a woman, which is highly likely. As the man and woman traveled, a stranger joined them. They told the stranger about the events that happened the previous week. 
and they shared their disappointment. They said, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Finally, the stranger who really was Jesus said to them, oh, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. He taught them about tr true messiahship as written in the scriptures. They invited him to supper. He accepted. At the table, he took the bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to them. As they recognized him, he vanished. Initially, they were disappointed at the death of Jesus because they thought Jesus was a mighty prophet like the others from the Hebrew scriptures. They thought he was to call the people back to God. Then Jesus would overthrow the oppressive Roman uh, occupation and their sycophants. They thought they would lead the nation of Israel back to its golden age when David was king. When he died on the cross, they quickly became disappointed. Their predictions were untrue. A civil uprising led by Jesus would not happen, and Jesus would not be king. Moreover, they didn't have a backup plan. Jesus was either their leader or he was not. When he died on the cross, their hopes were dashed. They had emotionally invested all they had in Jesus, the kingly Messiah. When he died at the hands of the Romans, all they could feel was disappointment. But, but when Jesus walked with them and taught them, he showed them another way. He restored their hope. He turned their disappointment into opportunity while Jesus taught them about the meaning of true messiahship, they began to see what could be. They began to imagine a new future, a new way of understanding God. At the table, he shared with them the Eucharist and he showed them the true way of God in the, how God works in the world. The resurrection was not about overcoming earthly powers, it was about overcoming cosmic powers, sin, evil, and death. It was about new opportunity and growth. What does the road to Emmaus teach us about disappointment and opportunities? My time as a prep school chaplain was rewarding on many levels. It just wasn't sustainable, and the school and I weren't a good match. When I left the school, I struggled to see the new opportunities emerging in my life. It took time. It took prayer. I needed to learn that my time as a school chaplain was not a disappointment, but one of growth. It led me to expand my professional writing. I had three books published during that period. It led me to my doctoral studies. In a few months, I will defend my paper. It led me back to you. I wouldn't be an interim if I was still in school ministry. I've grown in so many ways because of my time at the school and more so since I've left. I finally put things in perspective when I got on my knees and prayed. I had to ask God for help. I was in a funk and I needed to sh shake off my disappointment. I asked God to use me. It was a simple prayer, but I prayed, use me, God. Let me do your work. God did, and opportunities began to emerge. How about in your life? Perhaps you've had an event that didn't go as expected. Did you see it as a disappointment? What if you looked at it differently? What if you looked at it from God's point of view? In the book of Revelation, written by John, the last book in the Bible. In the second to last chapter, the one seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. That means 
Even our disappointments are things God makes new. Our job is to see how. As Christians, we have tools that will help us use and see new things emerging. First is Scripture. Jesus walked with the two disciples and taught them the way of God as found in the Scripture. When we are struggling with disappointment, God's Word can help us discover new opportunities for growth. Another is prayer. When we fall on our knees in disappointment about how things have worked out, don't wallow. Pray. Third is the Eucharist. I've witnessed the power of the Eucharist to turn disappointment into opportunities for growth. Each week at one church, I gave Eucharist to a woman who was struggling with the disappointment of her marriage ending in divorce. The body and blood of Christ fortified her, and through it, she discovered opportunities to live a happy and healthy life. Last, we may discover opportunities through service to others. One of the fastest ways to take away disappointment is to help a person in need. That's not because we can sit there and say, oh, I don't, my problems aren't as bad as this person. No, the, 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 in the act of helping, the Holy Spirit draws us and feeds us anew. This church has outreach programs. There are more than a dozen of them. And they're there for you to find new opportunities to draw closer to God, a new opportunity to look at disappointment and a new opportunity to grow. Disappointments can be avenues by which we see God at work. When we explore the things that haven't worked out and out to our expectations, we can look at them again and discover opportunities for growth. We can see the new emerging. We can discover new ways that we can be. We can discover new opportunities to be more and more the person God means us to be.